there, and welcome to Sage Advice Business Edition. This is a program of the Flowbell Academy. I'm Rivka Rivera, your host and Florence Belsky Charitable Foundation Associate Director. Okay, today we have two awesome guests who are going to talk to us all about podcasting. Mark Netter and Peter Rafelson are co-founders of Electricast Media. Electricast is a new 360 content company focused on inspiring and connecting people, creating a better world through compelling entertainment and storytelling. Electricast develops content along multiple verticals and mediums, spinning off hit podcasts into film and television adaptations, promoting new and emerging recording artists through Electricast music, and creating engaging narratives that unite entertainment partnerships with social impact goals. Their mission is to become the go-to partner for creatives in any medium to tell compelling stories in a daring new way. So let's get to it. Welcome, Peter and Mark. We're so excited to have you and to talk about podcasting. Of course, it's always been a popular thing, but it's become really big, I think, in the past five years. I know I was sharing with you guys, I was just listening to my favorites, true crime podcasts, but I listen to all kinds of stuff. And of course, you both are co-founders of Electricast Media, which specializes in podcasting. So welcome. I just want to start there. Why why podcasting for you guys? Why Electricast? And how did you meet? Well, the way we met, I, I was working at uh, Warner Brothers and uh, helping to launch DC Universe, the streaming service. And Peter reached out to me. Um, he has a studio that is located in uh, not too far from where Warner Brothers is in the Valley in Los Angeles. And I, I was fascinated with meeting Peter and, uh, you know, and I have to admit it partially because of his last name. His father is a well-known director from the, who was very much responsible for helping to build the Hollywood independent film movement in the 1970s with movies like Five Easy Pieces that he directed and Easy Rider that he produced. And so I was like, well, you know, if he's related to Bob Rafelson, I got to go take a shot and have lunch with him. And as we got talking, we got really interested in the idea of working together and we saw podcasting as a way to not only take advantage of strengths that both of us have. I come from entertainment advertising and filmmaking. Peter comes from a filmmaking family, but is really known for incredible work in the music business. And, um, and we thought there was an opportunity that it was a growth area, but not only for the podcasts themselves, but also for the rights that would be generated from the podcast. And as we've seen over the since Peter and I started working on this two years ago, that uh, Hollywood is going to podcasts to create content for TV shows, for movies, books are coming out of podcasts, live events, just like they have since the beginning of Hollywood. When back in the silent era, they went to books and then in the sound era, went to plays and then eventually TV shows. You know, Adam's Family was a TV show when I was a kid. Then it was a movie. Now it's an animated movie series. So uh, we saw that as being a big opportunity that took advantage of our strengths in entertainment and our contacts um, and abilities. Awesome. I think, so I think, I think that uh, Mark, Mark, Mark said it all. The only thing I would add to that is <clears throat> I don't think Mark and I ever <clears throat> assumed that all we would be doing together is, 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 podcasting but we we call the company an audio first media network mm. and that just automatically sort of implies that there's something beyond that one uh medium if you will and i think M mark's background is a storyteller and as a filmmaker my background and dna as as filmmakers and storytellers and 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 writers and producers that is our passion I think we, whatever we do, we will always be approaching it from that perspective. And we have, we wanted to build a studio, if you will, um, that could support that vision for ourselves and for others. And, and by amplifying the voices of everybody that we work with, we like to be thought of as, you know, a home for storytellers, a home for creators. And by the way, we're, 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 lately, which which is news, that you'll be the first to kind of have this story. Uh, Mark and I are launching uh, the Electric Cast Networks, which are a series of verticals, if you will. These are niche um, areas of interest for geared 
for specific audiences that advertisers want to target. So, and just to be clear, the difference kind of between how we started out working, where we uh, we were and still are producing our own shows with partners, where we co-own the shows, where we are involved with the development of the concept, production, and post-production. With Electric House Networks, we are aggregating independently produced content. And if you go to the Electric House website, you'll see a submissions page. And if you want to have your independently produced podcast considered to be on an Electric House Network, you can submit there and we will get back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, that's it's, really, I was just going to say that's really interesting. And it seems like I saw that on the page and... Um, a great way for people to go. I mean, you know, it seems like you cut out a lot of the middleman for people who have a story and they want to tell it. This is a place, Electrocast Media is a place that they can go. Um, and I know you look for compelling storytelling. What, what for you guys makes a story compelling? What kind of stuff do you gravitate towards? Well, you know, it's interesting. I want to, I want to sort of say, you know, there's different types of podcasts. There's some podcasts that are talk shows or some podcasts that are scripted. They can be scripted documentaries. They can be scripted f- fictional series. We have our first fictional scripted series coming out in Q1 of next year called The Last Saturday Night. And we're so excited about this. It's a great writer director, Jennifer Nash, who's a, also was a former actor herself. And she wrote a 10 episode series, 10 minutes each based on true stories from her family and friends at the start of lockdown. That's why it's called The Last Saturday Night. And the character that kind of represents her is the one who realizes that things are about to change. And then you kind of follow the stories of what happened. She has assembled an incredible cast. Her lead uh, actor is Sherilyn Fenn from Twin Peaks, Gilmore Girls, and Shameless. She's got Eric Roberts, who's been in a million things. We have what we believe is the last performance by Ed Asner who you may know from TV going way back, has more more Emmys than any other male actor in the history of the Emmy Awards. Uh, Tim Russ from Star Trek and many others. So, you know, those are certain kinds of real stories. Others are people who just have things they want to talk about in more interview type settings. Yeah, you know, you know, I want to, I want to just, uh, this might be interesting to the audience. So so it's, it's Mark, first of all, (laughs) The reason I wanted to work with Mark was because of his knowledge of an understanding of marketing and is he's just a smart guy, right? But he's the one that kind of helped me to understand that there are essentially three reasons why people listen to podcasts, three values to the to the to the listener, to the the user, if you will. Um, one is is just information, educational information. If you want to learn how to be a better business person, or if you want to learn how to fix a car or whatever, you you listen to the how to do things and who's smart and who knows what, right? You learn. Could even be a political podcast where it's like, oh, what happened this week in the news and how am I supposed to think about it based on my orientation and things like that. The The second reason is the personality, the host, you're a Joe Rogan fan. Are you like Howard Stern? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're interested in any one subject matter, but you come back to listen to that person. You have a relationship with, you're a fan of that person. But the third and and maybe most compelling reason is the stories. And this is what we focus on. The stories, not necessarily fictional, not necessarily all personal, but storytelling is the basis from the beginning of mankind of how to convey information. And hopefully, if you're a good storyteller, you're entertaining and you can keep the interest of those that are p- listening and paying attention long enough to get your story across. So that is what is. I want to say the common thread to everything that we do. Um, If you don't know how to tell a story, good luck keeping my attention. I'm, uh, I have a short attention span, which I've always said is what makes me a good songwriter because I have about three minutes to keep somebody, you know, uh, for a lifetime interested in that, in that three minutes. 
Uh, so it's it's all about economy yeah. of of attention, attention, uh, the attention economy is what we're what we're in these days. And just to get back to your uh, Rico, what you're saying about a question you're asking about storytelling and, and kind of to emphasize, you know, as Peter says, it's not necessarily that you scripted something. It may be that you have someone coming on to be interviewed and they're telling you a story about something they did in business that was successful, and they you understand the reasons why they did that. Or we have a global geopolitical risk show that will be coming on in Q1 called mm. the Geo Godfather Wars. And that's going to involve explaining what's the relationship between the U.S. and China, you know, for example, in an episode. And what's the history of that? And being able to bring people into a narrative so they understand things. I mean, storytelling is one of the ways that we, under, that we learn, that we understand. So, it, you know, it's as, you know, there's well, no, podcasts with people just riffing with each other, but generally you'll find the ones that, that grab people are ones where people eventually just start communicating. Stories. What, sort of what, narrative. One of those is called Nightmare Road Stories, and it's literally stories being told about being on the road as a comic and, and the craziest shit that you've ever imagined and un, not imagined takes place. And it's not all pretty. Yeah, it's all um, but true, it's, though. And it but feels it's all very fun inside. and it's all entertaining. And it's yeah. some of it's really, uh, you know, it, it, I, I have to say, uh, when I started listening to the um, to the to the comedians that were on, I expected it to all be um, funny, but some of it was very serious. And again, I've learned more about business from comedians failing on the road than I have from some business experts. It's, it's just fascinating. Yeah. By the way, the host of that show, uh, Alicia Cooper, is a brilliant stand-up comic and director now and has been working in the business for, I think, a couple decades. Um, but it's just absolutely hilarious. And when you hear these conversations that she has with other comics, most of whom she's friends with from... Mm you know, being on the road together, seeing each other different places, being on bills together. You feel like you're, you know, sitting in the in the bar after the show, listening to the comics say things that they only say to each other, that they don't normally say to the public. So it's a real insider view in their storytelling about life on the road. That, that's wonder, a really good point, though. I want to just add one thing, because yeah, Mark, 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 Mark is 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 100 percent right. You know, it's fascinating, but podcasting as a as a medium is the most intimate form of communication. Why? It's it's very personal. You're, you're usually listening on earbuds or something by yourself alone. You know, you don't get together and watch TV with friends. You don't get together and listen to podcast. It's very personal. And, and that the idea that there is a voice that is speaking directly into a single microphone, a point of reference, um, it's direct as, as it can get. So when you hear people talking, it's, it's, if it's, even if it's a conversation between two folks, um, it's almost like you're a fly on the wall and you're, you're a part of that conversation. I think that's part of what's different about making a podcast than it is about say a visual medium um, or, or something where, where there's a, a lot of people attending an event at the same time. That's so interesting. And, and it's, and it's true of the experience of like, absolutely true of the experience of listening to podcasts. Sometimes it's so intimate that you just feel like if you are, you're having this private moment between yourself and, and I wonder how much of that also has to do with the fact that folks on podcasts, right? they're not having to be on camera. It is just that audio experience, which literally gives a vibration into your ear. So there is a, a sensation of touch, which I think is really interesting. When people are on camera, they're very self-conscious and they're guarded. They're guarded about what they say, what they do. When they don't see somebody staring at them, they forget and they get into their own space and their own rhythm and they get, and they open up and they tell very intimate things that you might not otherwise hear. Mm. And I love what you said about the, um, our current just inability to stay focused for very long. But what I think is really interesting, you know, especially in the TikTok universe, which 
I do love some TikTok, but you, you can find yourself just next, next, next. And then going to TV and being like movie watching, like next. Oh, I can't, you know, it's terrible. It's really bad. I don't know what we do about it, but I do know when I listen to podcasts, it does feel like you are tapping into some kind of different neural pathway, potentially allowing yourself to say, I'm going to commit to listening to this. It's a different skill set. I'm not getting this visual. I mean, screen time after a year like this, it's really nice not to have to look at something. And then, um, you were talking also about the scripted material, which of course makes me think of it. And it's exciting for me as an actor. I'm like, Oh, so like radio plays yeah. ring a bell. Like it's very cool that that's coming back. Yeah, and there's lots of them, and there's 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 many that are being made, um, and, and a lot of different genres, you know, and you can do anything. It can be science fiction, can be you know, completely fool the audience because you're you're not you know seeing what's there. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about podcast listening behavior is podcast listening is what you do uh, when your when your hands are busy, you know, but your but your ears are not. So cleaning, uh, okay, cleaning, right, cooking. I listen to a lot when I'm cooking, driving. That's why, um, particularly before COVID, podcasts were averaging around 45 minutes. And that was considered to be the right amount of time because that was the average commute time in America. We're mm. finding that podcast uh, lengths are going down, especially as newer listeners are coming in who want things faster, you know, swipe, right. swipe. Um, exactly. They may look at it the length of something and see that, it, you know, they have a choice between listening to something that's 25 minutes or 30 minutes versus something that's an hour and a half they're more likely to pick something that's a little bit shorter. Uh, there are also podcasts now that are, that are uh, short, but more frequent, like daily. We have a podcast in the works right now called Mob Hit of the Day, which is the history of the mafia being told in three to five minute segments, five days a week. Wow, that's cool. I Very just found out my great grandfather was connected tangent but i just it was always a rumor in our in our family and i was like wait a minute why have i never googled this and all of a sudden my great grandfather was on every page of the every paper from like new york to iowa in his murder like in this famous mob murder i was like oh wait that's my great grand it was just wild so yeah i'll be listening to that mob those things always seem so much more charming when they're like you know half a century ago <laughs> right well, that was before, I mean, you know, that was when the newspaper was talk about storytelling. That was, they told, were telling a story. Yeah. And it was really interesting because I found different, and I was like, wait, the story was, in one, he was in a car when he got shot. Another, he was, you know, this, it's just embellishment of like the story. And, and when you talk about the word news stories, it really rings true. For anyone in our audience who might think, oh, I don't know, I have, I have some stories I've never thought about podcasting. I don't, I don't even know where I would begin. Like, what would you say to someone who's new to podcasting, knows nothing, who's just curious? Where does one begin? So there's a number of tools out there that make it easier to podcast than ever. And there's recording tools like uh, Zencaster, Riverside, a bunch of others. There's really uh, amazing AI-driven editing tools, one called Descript that we love, where it actually can take audio, turn it into a transcript. And if it's you edit the transcript, it cuts your audio and video at the wow. same time. It's insane. So there's a lot happening in that area. I think really the way to place to start though, more than anything else, is what do you want your podcast to be about? Are you a Dungeons and Dragons fan? And you could talk about Dungeons and Dragons and bring your friends on to talk about it all day long. There's a gentleman in Australia who ended a podcast this past year after three years, four years called One Heat Minute. And this was because he was so obsessed with the Michael Mann feature uh, Heat, which starred Robert De Niro and Al Pacino from about, I think, 15 years ago, that he decided to do a podcast where each episode would cover sequentially each minute of the movie. Oh, my God. It sounds insane, right? And he would talk about awesome. the stuff before and after, starting with the opening with, like, the movie company minute where they put the logo up there. By the middle of his run, he was getting the cinematographer, the, the production designer on. By the, at the very last episode, director Michael Mann was his guest for the last minute of One Heat Minute. And as Michael Mann said at the very end of the episode, I salute your obsession. So what is it you want to say? Do you, are you interested in mental health? 
are you, do you work with, are you interested in you perhaps in autism or something like that? Are you interested in politics? Are you interested in local politics? Are you an environmentalist? Are you, do you love certain forms of entertainment? Yeah, it, stories it's from the, your life that are fascinating. So the, the, wor- the word that Mark is describing is what's your passion? And, and, and the, the Ruby network, which is one of these verticals we are creating, the Ruby podcast network is, focused on 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 female empowerment and success and lessons and spirituality and wellness and being but the actual tagline for the network is um ruby your passion your success and that is i i I would say that is probably germane to all, all success stories is what's your passion you know i mean I don't think um, any successful business could have been founded without somebody being passionate about something, right? Nobody says, I'm really not interested in this, but I'm just going to do it anyway, right? If, 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 if Mark and I weren't passionate about being storytellers and about being in the entertainment and the community and the world of creating impact, we wouldn't have started electric cast. The other thing that I kind of, you know, even want to mention earlier was, you know, one of the things that Peter and I are both expert in and have a lot of experience in is, is helping talent to realize their goals. Um, when I worked in entertainment advertising, I would work with a lot of uh, creative directors and different very talented people at ad agencies, really trying to get them the best opportunities to show off their work with major movie studio releases or TV releases. Peter's done it with, musical artist. He has over 30 number one hits that he's written or produced with other people. But I think that the best thing, the other thing I would say about getting started, so know, you know, something that you want to talk about and then just try it. Remember that the first time you do it will not be as good as the fifth time you do it or the 20th time you do it. And that's okay. Uh, It's always hardest to get the first episode done. And then ideally you start to establish ways to make it very easy and less time consuming. And as I mentioned, there's lots of tools to help you to be able to do that. And, um, and you know, just really, you know, try it out. Do a little outline, a couple bullet, some bullet points of what you want to talk about. Try to keep your ambitions in a place where you can accomplish what you want to do in a set period of time. If you're doing it yourself or you're bringing on a guest, whatever it is, set it up, uh, record it, edit it, edit it listen to it, play it for friends, see if people love it. When you come aboard Electricast, so if you were, Rivka, if you were to do a network podcast with us where you were producing it independently uh, and you signed up with us, we would begin by offering you some documentation about the best ways to be able to create your podcast, what's good equipment to use, what's good ways to format your episodes so that uh, it's got the most impact. Are there certain things you want to record and play in every episode at the beginning and end? And then, you know, just fill in the middle each time. Uh, so we will give you all those best practices and kind of teach you, you know, those lessons, give you ideas about how to market your podcast. We market the networks as a whole, but the individual podcasts tend to be yours. We do ask that anyone who creates a podcast, this is for anyone who does a podcast, if you're doing more than one episode, create a trailer. Create a 30 second spot for your podcast. You know, for the people that work with us, the podcast owners that work with us, we run those ads on other podcasts within Electricast. So that's a way to get cross promotion and potentially get cross uh, appearances of guests from other, you know, who are hosting. It's other podcasts. fascinating that you what you what we have found, and I mean, it makes perfect sense, is that for those podcasters who are looking to promote a brand usually themselves as a brand or their business the act of distilling the message and putting it into a format that can be delivered gives them clarity in 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 a new way that they haven't had to do you know it's it's kind of like uh when you when you're creating a startup or you're an entrepreneur and you're told constantly, what's your elevator pitch? Uh, I, I literally, you have a, a finite ears and finite time to explain 
what it is you, that you're trying to get across, what your message is. This is maybe one of the greatest changes we see in some of the people we work with is how clear they become after sometimes a year. Um, we have one show, I, I actually, um, it's, 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 it's featuring um, folks from, from, from the adult world of entertainment and the the creators and the early stage uh was very rough they weren't they weren't used to, to to delivering and posting and being clear on on how to interview or how to communicate five episodes in night and day you see you see people being as professional as any podcast we've got and it was, it was, you, you know, you could almost trap the, the, the growth, the evolution, the learning process and, and the skill set that is created. It forces you to really, uh, you know, think before you speak. And that's, that's, I think, good for everybody. I think the other thing, too, to think about is, you know, there are different reasons why people do podcasts. One of them is that they just feel like they, they have something they have to say. They want to get it out there. Some people have certain topics that they're, you know, experts in and they want to share that particular knowledge, but um, kind of sometimes in combination with that, there's a lot of people that are podcasting because they are positioning themselves as, as thought leaders for business reasons. So a lot of the women that are on the Ruby network have their own consulting businesses and they find that podcasting is a way to not only attract clients, but sometimes they'll put people on their podcast as guests who at the end of the podcast will say, you know, when the, when the microphone's off, I'd like to start working together with you and they become clients. So podcasting is a way to, you know, I guess the way blogs were maybe 10 years ago, a way to create thought leadership and position yourself within a certain industry. Community where, yes. and community, which and is, community, which yeah. is literally part of our, our mission statement is to connect people and build community through entertaining and compelling stories. That, that, that is the, that if there's any sort of altruistic, you know, part of what we do, it's connecting and building communities. And, and that is ultimately, I think, what everybody seeks. You know, I've always said that displaced or lost people who are accepted into perhaps evil, you know, cults or groups the, their satisfaction there is strictly to belong somewhere, to feel wanted, to matter, to have a family. And it's unfortunate when somebody can't find that and they resort to less respectable groups. But on the flip side, building communities and bridges and ways to communicate and ways to fit and belong and have a sense of self-worth that's 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 invaluable, and I think that's the impact that Mark and I are making. That's wonderful, and I guess one of the key differences between something like radio, I mean, I know, or TV, or any, you know, that have you're experiencing it solo, but there's certainly then discourse and dialogue that happens between those community members, be it on a related page or a network, and you know, often I hear on podcasts there's a conversation between those listening because it's something that comes back and you always feel like, Oh, the listeners seem to have impact on that as well. So that makes me think of that community element and that those creating the shows are also reflecting that and how, like you said, by five, they're just getting clearer on sort of what that community may want, what their story and their, how specific they are. And by the way, you, you raise a really good point Rivka, which is that I, I think that that electric cast is really encouraging a two way conversation and and most podcasts are one way in in that sense. But we have we have forums and information on how to reach not only us, but the actual storytellers. And I think that that, you know, is going to become more and more helpful. Because what good is it if you just have a, if you're in a classroom and you can't raise your hand and ask a question, 
Right. Uh, you'll never get an answer. And I think everybody deserves an answer to their own questions. So um, for, for anybody that is listening to, to this podcast or this interview, I would just say um, we're very accessible and reachable and we love to hear from the audience. And we've actually created three ways on our website to contact us, depending on what you're interested in. Um, if you want to submit or talk podcasts, if you want to advertise or work with us, or if you just want to contact us as a general form, all of those are available. And we, we would encourage everybody to, to not even hesitate to reach out to us. That is awesome. I guess one question that I think a lot of people have also is how, how does it work to make money from podcasts? You mentioned advertising. So I'm just curious. I think that's sometimes a mystery for folks is, wait a minute, I know I hear advertisement on my, but how does it really work? You know, that is a great question. And I will tell you something that I've learned. I think Mark and I both learned. There are no rules to this answer, but I, 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 I traditionally it's expected that ad ad driven revenues are are, are going to be sort of common in most cases. But what we're finding more and more, and it's fascinating, is that the volume of listeners, of course, matters. But the quality and the specific demographic or psychographic of a listener is more valuable. And I'll explain to you what we mean. Um, we were chugging along and thinking that we would just build up enough ads and, and, and charge what's called a CPM model, which is the more people that hear your ads, the more you get paid. And, and, and we have a relationship with Spotify and one of our close associates there tipped us to something called the Horse Radio Network, which is a, 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 a series of 12 podcasts that have nothing but horse related stories. <laughs> and they're making millions of dollars a year just off these podcasts. Why? Because an advertiser or a sponsor who wants to reach a very, very specific audience knows that if they're listening to the horse network, they know exactly what their interests are. You know, if you if you if you want to sell stamps to everybody on the internet, then you'll 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 have a stamps.com ad that runs across every kind of podcast there is, but that's very general. Whereas being able to reach a very specific audience, it's much more valuable. And if I'm, I'm a, a, a cowboy boot store or a, or a tackle store or a feed store, I know that I'll spend triple the amount of money, but that every single listener is my customer as opposed to spending me. money and reaching a bunch of you know kids yeah. that may not have any interest in in that product so That's it's so really interesting it makes me think of the the but you know when you're making for anyone who's created a facebook ad before and you know that when you're and, and it's hard. And I guess that's also something as an ad, but you, you know, okay, well, my audience is going to be this and you want to get it as close to target audience as possible. That actually what you're saying is a more niche, knowing your audience, Absolutely. knowing that you have that niche Absolutely. audience is, oh, that's so interesting. That you said it, niche is the way, is the way of the future. Uh, I think it's really, we, we early on kind of realized that we're not going to necessarily be the largest um, podcasts in the, in, in the world. You know, I don't even know that something like Joe Rogan will ever happen again, but I can tell you that if you can nail a, an audience, uh, you don't even need to have that many listeners. As long as you know who the listeners are and, and you can offer that audience to a sponsor, a product, an advertiser, and yeah. it's wanna, amazing uh, yeah, how, me, how, how, how in some cases people will pay more money for a couple hundred good listeners than they will for 
thousands of listeners that they do that. Typically, ads are sold on what's called a CPM model, which is based on millions of impressions, or pardon me, thousands of impressions. So you pay per thousands of impressions. This is in TV advertising, it's in the internet ads that you click on or don't click on and Facebook and, and on Instagram. Um, but there are other forms of sponsorship that bypass the CPM rates because of those audiences. Other ways you can make money with a podcast, you can do live events. Uh, there are some podcasts that can fill theaters on a monthly basis, and they record those as live events and make more money from that than they would from advertising. You can potentially write a book that you spin off from your podcast. You can potentially create music and uh, have it on your podcast and then put it on Spotify and make stream money off of that. Another thing that's uh, just going back to the whole idea of promoting your own business, you know, if you're using the podcast because you have a a consulting business or because you're known in a certain area, forensics, um, you know, a stock advisement, whatever it might be, then the podcast can become something that is an advertising cost for you. Essentially, it's a marketing cost, but it's marketing you and you're making all the money from the folks that you're bringing into your businesses um, based on having established yourself with your podcast. That's a, that's a really good point, Mark, and, and I don't think it's, I, I'm still amazed because I, I think that it's it's kind of almost a well-kept secret. The technology of podcasting is much more developed than the tech of um, the Nielsen television type ratings where p- uh, people sign up and they're monitored. And with, with, with podcasting, the the information that can be tracked and gathered about how much of a podcast is even consumed down to the second when the drop-off occurs, what the actual operating system of every device listening, whether it's a phone or it's an iPhone or it's an Android or if it's a computer or if it's Microsoft or if it's an Apple, like there's so much information that can be correlated with, with the, the demographics and the actual marketplace that, that that people are trying to target, it it in a way it's I think it's the most um, bang for the buck when it comes to advertising. You know, Mark told me that that two years ago when we started this, podcasting wasn't even part of ad campaigns that 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 companies hire agencies to do now mark tells me it's like every every single campaign that an agency might you know uh suggest for their clients includes a a component of 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 basically the whole the whole way mediums become become successful as they become part of regular parts of media plans so if you're at procter and gamble and your agency is offering you a plan for whatever household product you're selling, Um, you know, a few years ago, podcasting would not have been a consideration, but now it would be on that list and they'll make a decision how much money, if they're going to put money into it. Um, But it's more and more. It's just a whole growing area. And one of the big changes, the reason this happened is that um, there's kind of two forms of advertising that you find on podcasting. One is what's the more traditional is direct sales. And the idea behind direct sales is, Advertisers don't maybe trust a new medium unless they can see a directly attributable sale that they can count the number of sales that came from it. Well, how do you do that in podcasting? You can do that in digital, right? Because if you click on something, it knows where you came from. Oh, it came from Facebook. Oh, it came from Rivka's blog, whatever, you know, with with an affiliate program, who knows what it might be. So in podcasting, direct sales meant you got a code. And you still hear this with Mark Marin on uh, WTF who says, Go to, go to Squarespace and use the code Marin for your first you know, free trial or whatever he gives you. And that's, that's something that advertisers are comfortable with because they, they know their ROI, their return on investment. But most TV ads, most ads you see on billboards, things like that out of home, those are not based on uh, direct sales. They're brand marketing. And brand marketing is basically saying, look, we just need to have more awareness of our brand or reminders of our brand. You know, when, when Budweiser buys an ad on the Super Bowl, it's not like they're introducing people to Budweiser for the first time, right? But what they're doing is they're reminding you that Budweiser is a great brand. It's a big American brand. It's a, an entertaining brand. That's why they have the football players doing goofy things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about uh, creating a brand image, maintaining that brand, 
and uh, creating a, an audience, you know, making sure the audience knows about it. And now, and this, honestly, we've really only seen this over the past 24 months. There is that rush of brand advertising into podcasts. There's, there's another aspect just back to the tech side of things. And I would, I would invite anybody that's interested in working with us to advertise, to, to let us demo um, a very sophisticated platform, which offers the actual client or the, the advertiser uh, a way to literally track every single listen to every single podcast in which their ad appears. And they can see it in real time. This is insane that you can track who's getting your message, literally who. I mean, you may not get a name, you may not get a home address, but you can tell uh, where they are in general down to the area code, down to the country, the city, the location, the, the demographic. And it's just uh, uh, an immediate way to, to, to be able to get essentially marketing information that you can't get from other, other mediums. Uh, it's, it's fascinating wow. to me. I mean, it, that's really fascinating. And I think, you know, because there might be people watching, we have so many people with small businesses in our foundation. And it's, I think people not, you know, when, when you're hearing that and you're like, oh, so if I have, for example, a, a business where I have rolling papers, right? That's going to be like, you're like, oh, okay, cool. Do you have, then I know who I'm looking for show wise, right? Like that I'm looking for, is there a show that's talking about the cannabis industry or telling even like stories, comedic stories related to cannabis? Like what a great opportunity for a direct audience base that might not be like you were saying before everyone in the world. Also, I find that better too. When I'm listening, I prefer to hear ads for things that I actually might yeah. want to get, you know, like, I mean, it makes sense on all the true crime podcasts that you're well, and, and the other, the other safety, the other, right? It's always like the ring doorbell or that they, cause you're super scared after listening. <laughs> well, also one of the things the about other, true crime other, is that's a very heavily, I mean, that is a more heavily weighted female audience than male audience. So that's something that advertisers tend to know. Ooh, that's why it's always they're, the hair dye ads. Exactly right. Exactly. Right. Now, if you were on a, listening to a sports talk show, a sports talk podcast, will probably be not exclusively, but more male oriented and you'll hear more male type ads. But the other, the other thing to remember, and this is really kind of the holy grail of advertising is remember the, the three areas that we talked about that are the drivers of, of listenership. Um, one of those includes being a fan of that host. And when you hear the host, your buddy, or your friend or your girlfriend talking about the product rather than just hearing a pre-recorded uh, commercial. Yeah. It's a whole different experience, you know? I mean, it's, it's it, totally. to hear Howard Stern talking, why, why am I listening to a two minute dissertation on female hygiene from a dude that has nothing to do with that? And yet he's getting ads to talk about this because everybody will listen to who they're interested in, not necessarily based on what they're talking about, but who's talking about it. It's fascinating. Again, this is that personal one-to-one -one experience. That is what makes it so much more valuable. People mute commercials when they're watching television. Yeah. They literally turn the sound off. If it's the person that you're there to hear in the first place, and it's still them talking, you listen. Yeah. Those are wow. called host red ads and they're the most valuable because it's, it's, it's literally pre recorded ads. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So this is so awesome. I mean, the, you guys have covered so much stuff and it's really exciting for anyone listening who wants to start a podcast. I'm sure they're going to, you know, you, you've described how accessible it is and all of those things you, um, those links you talked about, I'll get from you, Mark, and put them in our show notes on our YouTube page as well as, of course, the Electrocast uh, website where you can submit ideas. Advertisers can also get in contact with you. So for anyone listening, please do that. And yeah, I've learned a lot. It's really exciting and fun. Thank you so much for having us. This has been a total pleasure. Those are great yes. questions. Thank you both. Thank you so much.